Good afternoon. Um, not to. Oh I've seen that happen quite a lot. Of no, 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 not in public. Okay. touch on uh, what we're all gathered here for and that kind of thing is one of the things that happens is for my transgender girls and fellows as myself um, people don't realize that we have a culture and in trying to exist in this country and get the fairness that we deserve for being human beings and for the choices that we've had to live with due to the things that have happened to us oh, but I'm crazy with living by myself <laughs> oh wait a minute no legs attached to this thing so <laughs> Um, one of the things that you know, we're trying to get is respect and acceptance for who we are. We don't need no one's fucking approval to live the lives that we have to live for ourselves. And the thing is, the quicker that they learn that, the better off they are going to be. Uh, and, and going through this stuff is, within our organization, one of the things that we work at in trying to change the tomorrows is to work with the transgender women and people that are within the prison industrial complex. The kind of folks that the people feel in this society is a throwaway group of people. I'm sorry, no one's throwing us the fuck away. We're here, we ain't going nowhere. And when the dust settles, we're going to be here and stand up and holler, I'm still here, deal with me. And working through that, and in attempting to have this thing be a better place for all of us, uh, we work by trying to get the system to understand who we are and to chip away at that slowly. It's not like we can get together a bunch of folks and then storm the citadels like the Vikings did, tear down the wall, pillage the people, burn the town, and then move on. Those times are gone, but there's a way to still do that internally by giving the people that are supposed to be depressed and who are suffering crimes that I cannot even begin to tell you all about in this situation. But they are suffering at great length just to hold on to their humanity, to who they are. You lose contact with family and friends. You're at the beck and call of people who don't feel that you should exist in the first place. So in doing that, in the lives that you all have lived, you all haven't a clue of the things that are going on in other people's lives. People who have decided to fight the system, to be the person that they need to be, regardless of the pressures from family, friends, and society. And so in going through that, one of the things that we do is we try to support them and encourage them and be there for them 24 hours, seven days a week. I'm not a person and neither, none of my girls are technically people who can work from nine to five. Started nine and done at five. I'm sorry, it takes a little bit more than that to encourage people to stand up for themselves, to believe in themselves. Because one of the things that we find hard to do is how do you believe in yourself when everybody who knows about you or have met you looks at you as if you don't exist. Mm. How do you tell yourself, I can move forward? I deserve this. So we work on making sure that they know that, no matter where they are. Here in California, straight across to New York City, there are girls in the middle of this country. There are girls all over the world who are suffering at the hands of oppressive, annoying, white, tired, middle-aged, old motherfuckers. It has to stop. Through you all's help, we can get that to stop by banding together and learning the things that you need to learn to com combat this, to defeat this, to stop it from progressing on. Because if we don't do something about it, it will continue. Look at how long it's been going on now. And if they could go to another planet and rule them and take over, they would. You know, so let's get let's get the shit straight here. Let's work this out so that this kind of stuff stops happening. That people get a chance to believe in themselves, to work for understanding how things are going, and then to step up into the role of leadership. These movements cannot survive unless everybody is taken care of. Hmm. We have no room anymore to throw anybody under a bus. I don't care what color they are. I don't care what they believe in. That's not what should be happening. We should be looking out for one another. We should protect the people that need the protection. Be the voice for the folks who don't have a voice. Because they don't have one. Our community doesn't have one. We're the last people on a totem pole that is holding up the rest of this world, this culture, this society, and this government. And what they need to realize is by being the bottom of the totem pole, we're the ones keeping the rest of these motherfuckers standing. They need to realize that. Because without us, they would not be there. And they need to recognize that and give us not so much 
what we deserve and what we've earned by being here. We've earned this. I've earned to be able to go somewhere and say, I'm a black, formerly incarcerated, transgender woman, and I'm fucking proud of it. Mm -hmm. I don't have to apologize or beg anyone to understand or accept me. Deal with it as it is. One of the things that we really do work at in our thing is trying to take this liberation of people on to greater lengths, on to other stuff. Uh, one of the things that I've learned through doing this work is this stuff that's happening here is happening all across the world. I'm sure you all saw on the news what was going on in Egypt. In my mind, when I saw this, I thought, what a wonderful thing would it be to have a whole bunch of transgender girls storming the citadel and burning up shit. How it would be in my fucking mind. Yeah. yeah. You know, and the thing is that in going through this and in working with the things that we have to work with, we have to work with what we have to deal with. You all, by your, I don't know, how you were raised, by the power that you have by being white, you all have a way to it. get and accomplish things that we as transgender women of color can't do. You all need to use that. You need to make sure that you make this world a better and safer place for somebody else. Everybody does not have privilege. Everybody does not have the things that you've had in your life to get you to this point here. You know, I'm from a black family and my mother and my father had to work to make sure that we survived. Everybody hasn't had to go through that. Everybody has not had to live in a shelter because they can't find a place because of who they are. Or if denied jobs, you have all the qualifications. Because you can't get into school, you can't get into training program because people don't approve of who you are as a transgender person. And so what winds up happening is people who get these positions, who are transgender, can't tell anybody what kind of life is that is you can't live your life, be who you are, and stand up for yourselves. Where are our human rights? Where is our social justice? How on earth do we make things better if we can't make things change and be the way they need to be today? This should, this should have changed years ago. Just because Martin Luther King died did not mean all of a sudden black people have all the privileges in this world. Everybody that's black is not over Winter. I don't have the money to do that. You know, we have to work together on doing this. We have to find agencies that you believe in, that they're involved in social justice, work for them, help them to succeed, do whatever little things that you can do to help to make this better. This has to come from all of us. We are all a part of one another. Whether you're white, black, Asian, whatever, uh, Indian here, you know, it's a matter of holding hands spiritually, emotionally, and figuratively, and moving the hell forward mm -hmm. as one unit. We are one people. We need one thing to happen. We need to get the shit to stop. You all can help to do that, and I pray that you do. I hope that you do. And I hope as you run into people who are not of your class, not of your culture, to you give them the room and a chance and an opportunity to present to you who they are in truth, in honesty, and not decide in your head what they should be, how they should be, or the way they should look. Don't let your heritage and who you are and what your culture has been to have you approach somebody and make a judgment on who they are, what they should be doing, and why are they doing it the way I do. Mm -hmm. You can change that. And I hope that you do. That's my two cents. Mm -hmm.